Hey guys, Jason here, Samco Workshop. Today we're talking, are we really ready for a new 4Runner? It came out yesterday, okay? All the pictures, uh, people going gaga over this thing, throwing up and down. And, you know, they're, everybody you see them, they're all like stretched out over it like this, like it's the coolest thing in the world, and I get it. And it's a neat thing, and it's a new thing, and that's there. But are we really, really ready for it? Did we ask for it? Do we really want it? That's the thing we got to take into consideration. Sales of the 4Runner, the, this 5th Gen 4Runner, have been amazing okay this thing is a gold mine for toyota they make so much money on this the, the tooling and stuff that was used to build this thing is literally 20 years old okay they have paid for itself time and time again this is a cash cow for toyota and people are still willing to pay top dollar for it why is that that a 20 year old design suv with archaic an old school dinosaur almost like uh, motor, a five speed transmission. I, there's, I, I don't even think a lawnmower anymore has a five speed transmission. I mean, realistically, there is nothing like this left in the world today. Everything has been updated, changed, modified, but yet this still becomes and still has been one of the best selling vehicles Toyota's ever put out. Where, where, why, why, why are they changing it if they have that going for them? Why, why take that away from us? I understand out with the old, in with the new, a lot of people are requiring new things. They want stuff, but... And we were, I'm not going to beat this dead horse about how we're going to give up the reliability of this amazing motor, this 4 liter, and this, uh, you know, the 5 speed bulletproof transmission and all that. And I get it. The world wants the better MPGs. They want more tech. They want the cars to do stuff for them. They want that stupid lift gate here. I don't have my key on me for this. Do I? Yeah, I do. All right, cool. But they want this. This has got to be power. Everybody's all excited. Look, oh, you touch the button and it comes up on its own. Okay, they're all excited. Oh, and you hit the button here, B, and it comes down on its own. Is it really that hard to just grab that and throw it down? I mean, I, I prefer it. Um, I see that people want this stuff. They want this technology. They want all these crazy, cute little features, and they want to be able to come out here and just go beep, and the whole thing just goes dee, 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 on their own. And that's, you know, that stuff's important to people. Okay, they're bringing out the hybrid. That hybrid, we lose the floor. The floor is gone. The floor comes up this high. You lose that. I mean, you only have from here to here. So we're losing that height because this is all battery now in here. But you get a cute little storage box. But what was wrong with this one? Nothing. It's functional. It's capable. It did the trick very well. Um, there's a lot of benefit to it. So like I said, they, uh, this new 4Runner, I think, is... is a good looking truck it's very sexy looking truck it's got a lot of neat tech it's got a lot of nice stuff but you have to ask yourself did we really want it is it really an improvement is it going to be as reliable is it going to be as long term people that buy these buy them so that they can drive them for 20 years and never lose a wink of sleep about reliability or they're just going to go down the road we put up with the archaic designs we put up with the old school technology we put up with the low fuel mileage and we put up with all those things because it is bulletproof well the new one be i don't know the design of the new one is no different. The back end looks exactly the same as this for the most part. The only difference is 4Runner is not here anymore. Now it's down here. Okay, that's really the only, you know, and the taillights are a little different. But otherwise, it's almost identical back here. In the back, you got the same bulges and same cutouts here. They're a little more aggressive on a new one. But the same, they kept these cues there. We kept the same pillar here design on it. Same window design, but they do roll up. You know, oh, God, they come up to here. They come up a little higher, which is cool. I'm not taking any away from it but there's not a lot of change throughout the body till you get into the front end now the front end instead of looking like a forerunner now looks like a brand new tacoma okay that's the difference there and it is very sharp i am not taking anything away from the new one not even remotely i think it's a very nice vehicle but there's the the you know for many of us the issues lie in the fact that this design has been so flawless and proven and so simple and here, even when we look here, when we open the hood on this, and we come over here, and hang on, I'm going to try and do this one hand. Actually, I'm going to pause you for a second. There we go. When we look here, we have simplicity in its finest form. We have raw, simple, naturally aspirated simplicity in a four-cylinder, or I mean a four-liter V6 that is archaic and functional and easy. Now, we'll look at the inside I show you of this new system that's gonna be in there in that new one and what the difference is. Okay, this is easy to work on. This is easy to change things on. This is easy for the backyard mechanic to work on himself. This is easy, simple, reliable, bulletproof technology. That is gone in this new one. 
it is completely gone. Now we have this whole mess of stuff that is computer and tech and controlled by that and dealerships only and dealership prices are now getting up to $200 an hour in some places uh, for service. There's a lot of things there that are a downside. Is the new one an improvement in many aspects? Yes, it is. Better fuel economy, obviously more power, better better uh, fuel economy from the and the transmission is going to be better. Uh, you're getting the capability to put bigger tires on it. It's uh, it loses a track, looks like a track's gone. I don't see a track in a new one. You get MTS still and crawl control, and you get the rear locker um, in a TRD off road model, but you're losing a track. A track was a wonderful, wonderful tool that they've taken away from us in the new one. Um, so I mean, like I said, it's a pro and con on everything. The, what it's going to boil down to is the price. We do not know the price yet. We won't know that for probably another month or two. But when those prices come out, that will be the deciding factor. Because this vehicle here that you're looking at right now, I got for $42,000, brand new. Okay, that's, you know, now granted, um, I don't have the leather seats and I don't have a sunroof. I didn't want either. But, uh, but realistically, and I don't have navigation. I don't care about navigation. I am pissed that I don't have a compass. For some reason, the non-premium models don't get a compass. That upsets me. Everything else about this thing, I straight up love it. $42,000. What's this new one going to be? You know, do, uh, do I have to pay $50,000 for something that looks almost identical with a different front end? It's going to have more tech, less reliability, less longevity, more horsepower, better gas mileage, but more problems down the road. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. To me, it's really not. I'd rather stay this way. I don't. How do you feel? Would you rather this one had stayed or would you rather have the new one? There is no right or wrong answer to this. It's all personal opinion. But in my opinion, it is a sad day that this is gone and that the vehicle replacing it looks almost the same with a different front end. There's like no major gain there um, except for the motor and the trance and, and some, you know, little, little changes in there. I, I get it, but um, at the cost, what cost is this new one coming for us to? Is that cost going to be the reliability and the longevity, the bulletproof design, the, the never losing any sleep worrying about it? I mean, if you look at Toyota's track record for first year products coming out, it's not good. It takes, look at the Tundra. It took them three years to get the Tundra squared away. Um, it took them, when it first Tacoma, the, the third gen Tacoma came out, it took them three and a half, four years to get it squared away. Um, are we giving up all of this? For another three years of trial and error and issues and things coming up when it was already right here it was already flawless it was already selling better than most other suvs out there it was in such high demand and it cost a, a decent amount of money not ridiculous amount like some of these new ones are going to be i mean and it made toyota more money than any other vehicle out there it's a cash cow on every level everything about the fifth gen absolute flawless I'm not sure why they had to go and change it, but it's, you know, this is for you. It's your information. That's my thought, my take. What do you think? Are you excited that we have a new one out? Or are you looking at it and just kind of, once the shininess of it wears off, will we be happy that we have the new one versus what we had right here? That's the question. Let me know.